Okay. So there's four things that any of these tiles can be in this five by five. It's a five by five, meaning that there's five squares across and five squares down. Five squares across, five squares down. I'm going to refer to each row or column by the color line that they use. So, for example, this, this row right here is the red row. There's a red line between each of its squares. And then there's a red marker at the end. This is the yellow column. There's yellow lines in between each of its squares, and then there's a yellow marker at the end. Okay. So all the numbers in this 5x5 five five grid can either be a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3. What are those numbers? We don't know. They're on the other side. We can flip them over to find out. It's risky, though, because if it's a 0, you lose the round. It's a 0, you lose the round. Um, the number at the top here explains what the numbers in that row or column add up to. So, for example, this red row. This red row has six points. That means the numbers on the other side of these cards here all add up to equal six. I can go ahead and show you that right now. So one plus one is two plus one is three plus two is five plus one is six. All these numbers here in this row add up to equal six, this number at the top. And the same thing can be said about the columns. The number at the top are what all the numbers add up to equal. A Voltor represents zero. Voltor represents zero. Now, the problem is if you flip over a Voltor, you lose. Lot Logic says there's no three because there's going to be six. Right. I'm not, I'm not getting into that. I'm, not going, I'm only going so deep. You got to take it in steps. Um, the problem with that is a zero equals you losing the game. You can flip over a zero, but you won't get any points for that game. That round. So you don't want to flip over zeros. You want to flip over ones, twos, and threes because those will guarantee that you go to the next round. So this row here, I knew the red row. I knew that I could flip them all over because it told me there are zero Voltorbs. The top number tells you what all the numbers add up to equal, and the bottom number tells you how many Voltorbs there are, how many zeros there are. Again, you don't want to flip over any Voltorbs. I knew that it was safe because there was no Voltorbs. There were no Voltorbs. So the bottom number, let's look at, let me see. I want to look at the, I want to look at the yellow column right now. The yellow column has four in the top number and then one Voltor. So that means the numbers here all add up to equal one. How can that be if there's five squares? That means one of the squares has a Voltor, has a zero, and the rest are all ones because there's one Voltor here. Let's assume that this is the Voltor. This square here is the Voltorb. It might not be. It might be. But for the sake of explaining the rest of the squares, I'm going to say this one's the Voltorb. That means there's four squares left. Now, those four squares, since we already found the Voltorb, those four squares have to add up to equal four. We already know this one's a one. So that means the three squares that are left have to add up to equal three. The only way all three of these squares can add up to equal three, with none of them being zero, is if they're all ones. Now, how do the points work? The points for the game work, um, the first number that you flip over is added to your score of zero. So the first square that I flipped over here was a one. So I, I had zero points at the beginning. Zero plus one is one. And then every square you flip over after that multiplies your score by that number. So the first square I flipped over was one. I got one point. The next square was one. One times one is one. So I didn't get any points for that. The next square was one. One times one is still one. The next square was two. I flipped over a two. So one times two is two. That's how many points I currently have because the next square I flipped over was a one. Now, if you notice that, that means that anytime I flip over a one, I'm, I'm risking losing for no reason because I won't get any more points. I won't get any more points if it is a one. And if it's not a one, it's probably a zero. So before I said you want to flip over the ones, twos, and threes, but not any zeros, you actually don't want to flip over the ones unless they're going to tell you something that'll help you with another row or column. Because again, you don't get any points for ones. When I flipped over this one and then this one, it multiplied my score by one, which means it stayed the same. So you really just want to flip over twos or threes. Now let's take that back to this yellow column. There's one Voltorb in this yellow column, and then the rest are ones. Well, I just said I don't want to flip over any of those. So what I can do is I can mark down the entire column as Voltorbs or ones. I'm saying there's either a Voltorb behind this square or a one. 
But in either case, it's not worth it for me to flip it over because I don't get anything if it is a one. And if it's not a one, it's going to be a Voltorb. So let's just go ahead and leave that alone. Let's go ahead and leave that alone. You follow? Do you follow so far? I, I know. I, I think I might have said a lot of information in that one, but that's like the baseline of the game. That's the, that's the baseline of the game. There's that, as long as you understand that, you know how this game works. As long as you understand that. Now, there's a lot more, there's a lot more skills so that you don't have to take so much time to fly through explaining it like that. But at, at bottom line, that's, that's the basic of the game. You want to flip over the twos and the threes. Didn't know this shit. Exactly. The game doesn't explain it. It doesn't explain it to that level. It says flip over cards and collect coins. But if you flip over a zero, then your game is over. If you flip over a Voltorb, your game is over. Yeah, but you kind of don't want to flip over ones either. You kind of need to know what these numbers here mean. Otherwise, it's just on the board. Otherwise, you will just think it's a game where you just flip over tiles and you either win or lose. Okay, let's continue this puzzle. Let's continue this puzzle using just that baseline. I won't take it any I won't take it a step higher just yet. Okay. So let's look at the green row. I want to look at the green row right now. I want to look at the green row. The green row. Why am I looking at the green row? I'm really looking at this number here. I'm not I'm not literally looking at the green row. I'm looking at the numbers at the end of the green row. The green row says that the numbers here add up to equal 3. And then there are two Voltorbs, okay? The numbers behind here add up to equal three. Two of them are Voltorbs. Two of them are zeros. Okay. So that means there's two zeros here, and then the rest add up to equal three. Again, let's make an assumption. Let's make an assumption that we already have this one marked down. Let's say that this is a Voltorb, and then I'll just pick another square. Let's say that this is a Voltorb, okay? Again, they might not be. They might not be, but we're just doing a hypothesis here. If these two are Voltorbs, that means we have three squares left. And those three squares have to add up to equal what number? Three. That's the number up here. That's this number here. So the three squares left have to add up to equal three. They can't be zeros. So what number can they be? They would all have to be ones. We have three squares left. They have to add up to equal three. Number one plus number two plus number three equals three. That means they're all ones. OK, now using that same that same idea that we don't want to flip over Voltorbs or ones unless we absolutely need to know where they are. We don't need to flip over anything in the green row because these are all either Voltorbs or ones. This was my hypothesis that this was the, the Voltorb and that this was the Voltorb. That might not be the case. That might not be the case. But we know for a fact that everything in this row, the green row, are Voltorbs or ones. He said in my head. Like I said, it, it, if, if I'm saying too much, let me know. I can, I can break it down. I can break it down a little bit simpler. But we know for a fact that everything in the green row is either a Voltorb or a 1. We don't need to flip them over for any reason right now. So we don't need to flip them over right now. We can mark them all down. They're all Voltorbs or 1s. And that's the baseline of this game. That's, the, that's as simple as it gets. That's as simple as explaining the rules gets. Let me change this song. Okay. Now let's take it up just one step, just a baby step. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be too difficult. I'm sorry, too different than anything else that we've known. It's just gonna use a different number. I can go back because you're streaming on YouTube. Yeah, like I said, the, I'm not gonna take this one down. I'm gonna leave this one up. I'm not gonna edit or anything. Okay. Uh let's see. I wanna look at the blue column. I wanna look at the blue column. The blue column has five points and one Voltorb. That's different from the other ones that we've seen so far. They've had four points and one Voltorb, which adds up to equal five. They've had three points and two Voltorbs, which adds up to equal five. But the blue column we're looking at right now is five points and one Voltorb. So we have to think a little bit differently for this one. It's not because you ever play Minesweeper, you play by guess, but this game helps you with it. Actually... Minesweeper is not a guessing game other than your very first move. Other than that, Minesweeper is not a guessing game. One day I'll play Minesweeper on the channel too. <laughs> okay, so the blue column. The blue column says five points, one Voltorb. 
Now, we already know one of the squares in the blue column. It's a two. Let me move that out the way. It's a two. So what we can do is we can kind of take that out of the points that we need. And we can just look at the squares that we need to find. So if this is a two here, and this is five, we need five points for the whole column. We really just need to find five minus two more points. Five minus two would be three. So for the rest of the blue column, we really just need to find three points. And then there's one Voltorb. Let's do it again. Let's assume that this square that we already have marked down for something else is the Voltorb. Let's see. Hey, hey, what's going on, Gabriel? Okay, let's assume that this square that we already have marked down is the Voltorb. It might not be, but we're just hypothesizing so we can figure out information for the column. If this square is the one Voltorb in this column, that means the rest of the column has to be numbers, right? Again, we have five points in this column, and we already know where two points are. So five minus two is three. The rest of this column here, the rest of this column here has to be, uh, let me see. The rest of this column has to be ones because we have three points left and three squares. One, two, three. That would give us our three points and our three squares. But if that's the case, that means the entire column is Voltorbs or ones. Entire column is Voltorbs or ones. That means we don't have to flip over anything. We, we, we're good. Another, another thing that I think I missed, the game wants you to find all the twos and threes. Even the game knows that you don't need to find the ones. It just wants you to flip over everything that's going to give you more points. All the twos and all the threes. So let's see. So we've marked down two columns so far. We've marked down one row, and we found one row completely. All right, let's see. Anywhere else we can go? Let me see. Did you do you follow all that so far, Dylan's? Did you follow all that so far? Because the rest isn't going to go too far from that, but it's it's imperative that you get those so far. All right. Let's see. Okay, as long as you're following. If 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 you if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I have no problem with going back over something I explained. Feel free to ask. I'd rather you ask and me explain twice and you get it than me explain once and, you, and you're lost. Okay. So let's see. Another column that we could look at, another column or row. I think I kind of want to look at the green column. The green column here. The green column had the same number set. I, I started calling this a number set. That might not be the term for it, but that's what I'm calling it. The green had the same number set as the blue, but it has a different situation. We, we know different. Let me change the song. I'm trying to find some without words. Um, it has different information that we know. The blue column had a two in it that we already knew, and that helped us define the rest of the blue column. Wait, how old am I? Who, me? How old am I or Dylan's? Moving on. Um, the green column has a one revealed, which is a little bit different than having a two. The green column has a one revealed. So let's see. For the green column, we have five points and one Voltorb. We already know one of the numbers in the green column is a one. We already know one of the column numbers in the green column is a one. So we can take that out of the five here. Five minus one is four. For the squares that are left, we know that they have to add, one of them is a Voltorb, and then the other three have to add up to equal four. Okay? So let's think. Using... Let's see, I'm going to type something in the chat real quick. If you were a teacher, that would make it pretty old just for the learning needed. Well, <laughs> okay, I'm going to type this math problem out, the math problem that the green column presents us with. I'm going to type that and put that in the chat so you can see it, okay? So let's see. We have three squares that need numbers, and then one of them is a Voltorb. The three squares that we need have to add up... Um, have to add up to equal four. So we have number one plus number two plus number three. And those all add up to equal four. I just posted that in the chat. Um, number one plus number two. Let me see if I can move back to this. Okay. Number one plus number two plus number three 
equal four. What different, using the number zero, one, two, I'm sorry, not zero. Using one, two, and three, how can we fill in number one, number two, and number three so that they add up to equal four? Sorry if you're a teacher. I know peop- I know you hate people who go off track. No, I actually don't hate going off track. I'm just trying. I'm trying myself to not get too sidetracked. I don't mind answering questions. Uh, if I was a teacher, I'd make me pretty old. Not not pretty old. Okay, I'm old. I'm older than you guys. <laughs> okay. And if I ask that question weirdly, uh, I can try to reword it. I can try to reword the question. I know it's a hard. It's kind of hard to see. Number one plus number two plus number three. Number one would be the number in this square. Number two would be the number in this square. And number three would be the number in this square. We need those three numbers to add up to equal four. We can pick between one, two, and three for all of those. Which one of, what, what, what different combinations of numbers can we use to add those up to equal four? That's what that's asking. It's saying, okay, so let me see. There's only one combination that we can use between one, two, and three to add three different numbers to get, I'm sorry, add three numbers to get four. It would have to be one, one, and two. One plus one plus two equals four. Now, the numbers could be arranged differently. So it could be that this is the one, this is the one, and this is the two, or this is the one. This is the two, and this is the one, or this is the two, this is the one, and this is the one. Any of those is possible, but those are the three sets of numbers that we can use to find four for the missing squares. And then one is a Voltorb. Now, here's the tricky part. Before, we could say that it's all Voltorbs are one, so we don't need to flip anything. In the green column, there is one square that we need to flip, whichever square has the two. But the others don't need to be flipped. The others are just Voltorbs and ones. That would mean that would mean that one of these is a two, and the others are Voltorbs or ones. We absolutely know that we know that we absolutely don't need to flip over this square. But one of these three does need to be flipped over before the puzzle is over. Otherwise, we won't have our two to make five points and one Voltorb. So we just mark it down like this, and we'll come back. We can come back to it later. There's no rush. We can come back to this one later. Do you follow that? Does everybody in the chat follow that one? If you can follow that, then then we'll get through it easy. We'll get through everything easily if you can follow that much. Because that's, that's the extent that level one gets. That's the extent that level one gets. And I don't think level two gets too much harder than that. Okay. Dylan says he or she follows. I'm here for that. As long as, as, long as they follow. Now, Josh, remember, this is a tutorial. We're not just solving the puzzle immediately, okay? We're not just solving it immediately. I'm, I'm glad that you're – see, it's like I'm, it's like I'm teaching again. <laughs> I'm glad that you're ahead of the game, but we got to make sure everyone gets there, okay? Okay. Let's see. Oh, Jasmine's watching. Jasmine's my girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad she's watching. I'm glad she follows. I'm glad she follows. Okay. So let's see. <coughs> Let's see, where else can we go? No, 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 don't, you don't have to apologize. It's okay. It's okay. I understand that you're processing which one we should flip over. That's okay. That's 100% okay. We're not, we're just not doing it. Okay, let's see. If we want to look at the five, I'm sorry, the, the purple row. The purple row has a number five at the top. That means the points in that row add up to equal five. The points in that row add up to equal five. The... Voltorb number is one. That means there's one Voltorb in the purple row. There's one Voltorb in the purple row. I wonder how long she's been watching. I wonder if she saw me get all super nerdy. <laughs> there's five points in the purple row, and then there's one Voltorb somewhere. There's five points and one Voltorb. Let me turn that music off. Give me a uh, Let's see. Let's assume that this square here is the Voltorb. This square that I have selected. Let's assume that's the Voltorb. That means the other squares have to add up to equal five. These four squares here have to add up to equal five. Number one plus number two plus number three plus number four equals five. That's a lot to type out. So what you can do is you can kind of ignore that puzzle and see where everything fits in. So assuming this is the Voltorb, 
The rest of these have to add up to equal five. If this is a two, if this is a two, and we still need five points total, how many points more points do we need? Two plus what equals five? That's the faster way of looking at this. Three. Two plus three equals five. So in this square, this square, and this square, we have to have three points. In those three squares, we have to have three points. The only way we can have that is if those are all ones. So what we just found out, not just for this square, but for every square that we didn't have filled in, is that the squares not filled in are either Voltorbs, ones, or twos. That's what we just found out. I, I feel like that one might be a stretch. That one I might not have explained as thoroughly. If if I haven't, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat, and then and I can go back over it. I feel like that one that one might have might have gone over over the top. I could have done a lot better job explaining that one. Let's see. Now we good. Okay. Everybody good? Everybody thumbs up for everybody? We got that? I don't wanna I don't wanna the five can't be two because the five row can't take a two. Five can't be two. Five one row can't take a two. Five can't be two. Five can't be two. Shh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> you tell the answers. Okay. It's five. It's good. Okay, let's see. Everybody said they got it. Everybody said they got it. We're gonna we're gonna move forward a little bit to solve this puzzle. Okay, let's see. I think I want to look at the red column. I think the next one I want to look at is the red column. We got six points in the red column. We have six points in the red column. And then there's one Voltorb there. This one might end up being a little bit like the purple row we just did. Let's see. The six points in the red column, one Voltorb. Okay. For safety, let's assume that this one here is the Voltorb. Again, hypothesizing. Doesn't mean it is. Let's assume. If this is the Voltorb, that means the other four squares have to add up to equal six. The other four squares have to add up to equal six. We already have one. So one plus what equals six? Five. So that means the three squares that are left have to add up to equal five. What are some ways that we can have three squares with one, two, and three add up to equal five. Let's see, what are some ways we can have three squares add up to equal five if our options are one, two, and three? Okay, if we want these three squares to add up to equal five and our options are one, two, and three, that means we can have 2, 2, and 1. I'm going to put these in the chat so that we have, we have somewhere to look at it. 2 plus 2 plus 1 would equal 5. And then we also have 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals 5. Right? So that's, how, that's how numbers work to add up to equal 5. Now what's interesting is we can almost fit those in any possible way. Almost. This square down here, oh my God, I'm doing it again. This square here can't be a three. This square can't be a three because of what we found out already. So if we want three, one, one, this one can't be the three. It could be either one of these is the three, but this one can't be the three. So let's go ahead and mark that in because we could have three, one, one, and that works. Or we could have one, three, one. And that works. But we can't have a three here. We've already determined that this square cannot be a three. All right. Another way that I said is two, two, one. We could have two plus two plus one. That equals five. That's three numbers. And it will fit. And any of them can be two, two, one. So it could be one, two, two. It can be two, one, two. Or it can be two, two, one. Now that's assuming that's assuming that this square is the Voltorb. So 
in reality, what we just learned is that any of these squares can be any of the possible numbers. One, two, three, or Voltorb. Voltorb, remember, being a zero. Do you follow that? Everybody follow that? I don't know what I don't know what Game Freak was thinking when they decided to put this logic game in the middle of Pokemon and not give it a proper tutorial. Because the fact that we're still explaining this one means that this definitely needed a tutorial. Okay, everybody got it. Everybody got it. Now we have two squares left that we don't know anything about. So we kind of want to focus on figuring those out, and that should help us figure out the rest of the puzzle. Okay? So we're going to look. I think we're going to look at the purple column right now. The purple column. It says five points, two Voltorbs. Five points, two Voltorbs. Okay. So that means two squares here are Voltorbs. Hypothesizing, let's say that this one is the Voltorb, and then this one's a Voltorb. It was better than the slot machine. I mean, the slot machine, people knew that you just press buttons. <laughs> There's secrets to it, but uh, people knew that you just press the buttons. This one, it, it, it puts a lot of the game behind a barrier that you need to, you need to like be a super genius to figure out, to, to figure out and profit from it, you know? Okay, like I said, we're gonna, this one had a one in it. Remember that, I didn't mean to get sidetracked. This one had a one in a Voltorb. This one didn't have anything. We're gonna assume right now that these two have the Voltorbs for the column. So if these two have the Voltorbs, then the other three squares have to add up to equal five. We already have a one, okay? So we can use those same numbers that I added before, two plus two plus one, or three plus one plus one, and those will work here as well. Sorry, one of those won't work. Two plus two plus one will work because we could have a two here, a two here, and then the one all the way up here. But three plus one plus one won't work. Three plus one, sorry, three plus one plus one will work, but it will only work one way. If we have the three here, and then this would be a one, and this would be a one. So we said two plus two plus one works. And three plus one plus one works. But they only work in those specific scenarios. Now, again, we were hypothesizing we were hypothesizing that these two had the Voltorbs. That may not be the case. So this one here can either be a Voltorb, a 1, a 2, or a 3. But this one can still only be a Voltorb or a 1. It can't be a 2 or a 3 because of things that we found out before. This is all the information that we have right now, just using basic level explanations on Voltorb Flip. Let's see. Pixelized 92, 59.2 says, thanks for helping me get a Dratini. It was because of you that I started getting good at Voltorb Flip. You're welcome, and thank you for checking out the video, the streams, and all the things that I've done before, okay? I'm, I'm glad that I can help somebody to learn how to do this. Being a nerd has its advantages, all right? <laughs> okay, I'm glad I can help you, though. I appreciate you dropping by the stream and let me know. I appreciate it. Okay. So now after, after all of this evaluation, this is what we know based on just the information that each row or column gives us about itself. We know that we can't touch anything in the yellow column, the green column. Oh, wait. Let's go ahead and move this back. We can't touch anything here. Okay. We can't touch anything there. You see, you always check your work. Always check your work. Oh, dear. <laughs> Puyo says, oh, dear. Okay. Let's see. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try and start solving it just so I can show you the line of logic behind everything. The safest square for guessing right now is probably this one. The square that intersects the red column with the blue row. It's the safest because both of those columns have the least amount of Voltorbs in them, as well as give you the most points. Yeah, like getting you the perfect girls. <laughs> It'll be okay. My girlfriend loves my nerdiness. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and flip this one. It could be entirely wrong. It could be entirely wrong, but I'm going to flip it because I think it's the safest. I think it's the safest. It's a one. Wow. Okay. So that square was a one. 
Will that help us with the rest of the columns and rows? With the rest of the red column or the red blue row? If this is a one, we already have two points revealed from six. So six minus two is four. So the rest of these have to add up to equal four. This one, this one, and this one have to add up to equal four. I'm sorry. Two of these squares have to add up to equal four. These two, two of these squares have to add up to equal four, and the other is a Voltorb. Okay, so here's what it could be. If two of these squares have to be a four and the other is a Voltorb, that means that if this is a three, the rest of the column is Voltorbs or ones, or these two are twos and this is a Voltorb. In both cases, this one is either a two or a three. It can't be a one. It can't be a one because then the rest of the column won't add up to equal six. If this is a one and this is a two, which is the highest this could be, this would have to be the Voltorb for the row, and that would only be five. So we know for a fact that this one is not a Voltorb. And then we could pretty much guarantee that it's not a one either. So this square is either a two or a three, definitely. It's a three. Now, we finally figured a square that's not a one, so our score got multiplied. Before we had a two, and now our score is multiplied by three. So if we succeed, if the game were to be over right here, right now, we would have six coins. I'm sorry, if, 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 if the round were over, not if we flipped over a Voltorb. If we flip over a Voltorb, we lose everything. But do you guys see? Do you guys in the chat see that line of logic there? Okay, let's move on. This is a three. This is a three, and one makes four. Plus one makes five. And we need six points in this column. One of these two squares is a Voltorb, and the other one, when we add it to five, gives us six. That means the other one is a one. The red column, we entirely have figured out everything we need to figure out. One of these squares is a Voltorb, and then the other is a 1, because that would be 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus 1 more makes 6, and then the other is a Voltorb. Remember, you don't, need to, you don't want to flip over Voltorbs, and you don't want to flip. You don't have to flip over 1s unless you absolutely need it to figure stuff out. Let's see. Puyo says... I can see it, but the Voltorb flip still makes me feel a little bit nervous. Yeah, it's you're you're supposed to feel nervous unless unless you're doing your logic flawlessly. And and even then, even then, I can I can look at something, know it, and then I'll still be like, no, I, I don't think I should flip it. Okay, I think I want to look at the yellow row now. I think I want to look at the yellow row. The yellow row has five points and two Voltorbs. So two of these squares that we don't know are Voltorbs. We already know this is a three. So let's take that three out of the five that we already know. So if we have five minus three for these three points that we already know, that means two of these squares are Voltorbs. Let's, I'm just hovering over these two right now. Let's say two of these are Voltorbs, and then the other two add up to equal two. Well, if we only have four squares and two of them are Voltorbs, that leaves us with two squares. And those two squares have to add up to equal two. There's only one way we can have two squares equal two and not use a zero. That's if both of those squares are ones. So what we just found out for the yellow row is that everything in the yellow row is either a Voltorb or a one. There's no need to flip over anything in the yellow row. So we can mark it all down. When I have it marked with, with like this, with a Voltorb or one, that means I'm not coming back to that square unless I absolutely need to flip over something to find something else out. 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals 5, and then the other two would be Voltorbs. Again, I'm just hypothesizing that this is how it's arranged. It doesn't have to be, but what we absolutely know is that this entire row that's left is 1s or Voltorbs. D Dylan said, I can't believe I'm getting this. That's, that's all it takes. That's all it takes is a decent explanation, and it turns this from a game of just flipping stuff over into understanding the universe. The entire world is unlocked right now. <laughs> Okay, so we're done with the red column. We're done with the green row. We're done with the green column. That leaves just this part of the blue row. Let's see, this part of the blue row, and then this part of the purple row. Okay. 
So really, we just have four squares that we're looking at. We really just have four squares we're looking at. Okay, let's see if we can figure this one out. Let's see if we can figure this one out. What we can do, since we have so few squares left, we can we can really hypothesize instead of just saying, okay, this square is this, this square is that. Let's look at this square specifically. Let's look at this square specifically in the intersection of the purple column in the blue row. Intersection of the purple column in the blue row. There's two scenarios for that square. That square is either a two or a three. But wait a second. Why isn't it marked down? Because what it currently says, if it is a two or a three, we don't really even have to do the math. We could just flip it. But I need to know why it doesn't have. I think I might have unmarked it to get through one explanation. And I didn't mark it back down. Let me see. Okay, I'm, I'm for this for the time being. I'm gonna put all those there. I'm not gonna look at that just yet. Let's look at. Uh, actually, I think that is what I need to look at. Never mind. Never mind. I'm not gonna mark it down. So let's see. Let's. It the square is either a two or a three according to what notes we have here. Let's assume it's a two. If it's a two, what does that mean for the rest of the row? Uh, if that's a two, what does that mean for the rest of the row? Remember, we need six points, and one of these is a Voltorb. If it's a two, then this would be two plus one is three. Three points. So then the rest of the row would have to add up to three. These squares would have Two of these squares would have to add up to three to make our six, and then one of them would be a Voltorb. That would mean that this would be a two, and then one of these is a one, and the other is a Voltorb. Now that's if this is a two. If it's a three, then that means the rest of this is ones or Voltors because this would be three plus one makes four. One of these would be a one. That would make five. The Another would be a six. Oh, it would be a one. That makes six. And then another is a Voltorb. I'm just trying to figure out why I didn't have this. Why I didn't flip this if I have it marked down like this. I kind of want to do it, but we're at, it, it's... If I made a mistake, it's going to be so wrong. But I'm going to flip it because that's what our notes say. Okay, it's a three. So we had six points. Two times three times another three makes 18 points. Okay, so like we said, if this is a three, that means the rest of this row has to be Voltorbs or ones. This can't be a two because that would add up to one plus two plus three is six. One of these is a Voltorb, but then the other can't be a Voltorb. That would be one. It would add up to seven. So this is also a one or a Voltorb. And then that would go ahead and tell us for the green column. That would go ahead and tell us for the green column that this would have to be one plus one plus one makes three. And a Voltorb plus two. This would have to be a two. That's the only way it could work. So our scrolls multiplied again by three, uh, by two. 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18, times 2 is 36. And that's all of level 1. That's how you solve level 1. The, the whole game is logic. It's all logic. Understanding how to interpret the clues that we're given. It might get down to the point where you have four squares left, and to figure it out, you really just have to flip the coin. You could be wrong when you flip it. You could be right, but you did all the perfect logic up to that point. But more or less, that's Voltor Flip in a nutshell. Let's see. I'm going to play a little bit more Voltor Flip. I've been streaming for, what, two hours? I've been streaming for two, and, and I, I've gone through this tutorial. I have no problem with continuing the tutorial. I might might start doing Voltor Flip randomly again. And then that's the rest of the board. It matches up with everything that we found out. Everything that was marked with a Voltor or one. Yes, Josh, you can go back to showing off now. <laughs> Feel free. Feel free to fly through it. This video was part of a stream. If you want to catch our streams live, make sure you subscribe to AltPlay as well as turn on notifications and follow at the AltPlay on Twitter. That way you can stay up to date on all changes.